Morning everybody, welcome uh, to my latest video. Uh, we're playing uh, the Prussians against the French today and we're having a go at uh, a scenario based around the Battle of Vauchon, which was fought on the 14th of February uh, 1814 and it's part of the famous Six Days campaign where Napoleon personally led his French forces in the final attempt to stave off the Allies capturing Palace, pa Paris uh, and it reflects uh, his attempts to defeat uh, General Blucher and the army of Silesia. Uh, we particularly uh, picked this battle because there's a predominance of Prussian troops rather than uh, Russians uh, in Blucher's force in this battle. So uh, we've pretty much got the figures on the table and it does give me a chance to have an outing for my new Prussian limbers and my new Prussian uh, Landwehr cavalry units, uh, which hopefully you saw in the last couple of weeks on our update videos. Um, so what we have here is the start of the battle where we have Napoleon uh, pushing forward with Marmot's 6th uh, Corps uh, and we can see the 6th Corps here, three small divisions, uh, one, uh, one of only four battalions uh, and then two more of three battalions reflecting the uh, shattered nature of the French army at this time. Uh, these three divisions uh, will all be treated as brigades and uh, the, the middle brigade will be regulars. The two outer brigades will fight as conscripts. They're going up against uh, Blucher's forces and uh, initially on the table we have Zethan's uh, 11th division of Kleist's 2nd Corps. So they're holding uh, this village, the village of Vauchon, and uh, that little uh, outbuilding out there to the right is um, a little hamlet of Jean Villiers, and uh, the building at the back is the hamlet of Fromontier. So uh, the orders for Blucher are to concentrate his army on Vauchon and defeat the French and push forward to Paris. Uh, for the French, Marmont knows that Napoleon is moving rapidly up in his rear, um, as is Grouchy, and Grouchy is bringing uh, all of Napoleon's uh, heavy cavalry reserve, and uh, Napoleon himself is moving up with the young, and then potentially, ultimately, with the old guard to support this attack. All right, hopefully this will be a fun game, and uh, we'll start with turn one. Cheers, everyone. Okay, so in the first turn, the French have arrived on the table. Um, we, as I say, so just to give everyone an order of battle, we've got a uh, brigade of conscripts there, a small brigade of uh, three units. Uh, we have another brigade here of three units. These are of regulars. And then a final brigade down here of four battalions of conscripts. These uh, troops have uh, all activated this turn and moved onto the table. Uh, and the French uh, lost initiative. So the Prussians uh, have initiative in this turn. The Prussians haven't moved, uh, having done their pre-game deployments. So we'll now move straight on to firing in turn one and uh, the Prussians uh, will open up. They have put artillery assault on their main battery here in the village. Okay, so first we'll open fire with the Prussian skirmisher screens going at the French skirmishers. It's uh, one casualty on a six and we'll fire the second skirmisher screen, which is over there. And no casualties for those. So one casualty on this French skirmisher screen. And then we'll open up with the Prussian artillery. So we've got artillery assault on this battery here. It'll open fire against the French uh, regulars approaching in the center there. All right, uh, let's do this artillery assault. I think that'll be at effective range. We roll a seven for the Prussians with one extra casualty from the artillery dice. So a seven at effective range is one casualty on the French. All right. And then finally, we will fire. We will fire the French. Uh, we'll fire at the French with this Prussian artillery battery in the uh, village to the rear on the hill. This will be firing at long range. And they roll a six. That'll only be a half a casualty. Uh, let's roll that again. That's cocked. One. Okay, so no casualty as a result of that fire. So nothing uh, nothing too significant from the Prussians this turn. I'll do the return fire with the French skirmishers and then come back 
as we move on for ADCs for turn two. Okay, so turn two, let's roll for ADCs for the French. We have four off-table brigades, sorry, six off-table brigades for the French. Uh, and we get two activation dice from there. And then we have six on-table dice uh, with three bonus dice for Napoleon. All right, uh, so we've got another four ADCs from that. So we've got six ADCs to deploy for the French this turn. We'll certainly put infantry assault and then re-rolls on the other two battalions. So we'll go for infantry assault, I think, on our regulars in the centre. OK, we'll roll for activation. The far brigade is active. The brigade with infantry assault is active. And then the near brigade is also active. All three brigades are active. And the French regulars have infantry assault now in place. OK, for the Prussians, we have three brigades on table and one bonus dice for Blucher. Um, unfortunately, we only get two activations with those. And then we have four brigades off table. So we need fives and six for activation. So we do get another two. So we've got four ADCs for the Prussians this turn. All right, again, we'll go for artillery assault on that battery in the centre as a priority. And we'll go for a reroll um, on the other two brigades for the Prussians. No, we'll go for a reroll for the brigade on the hill, which has the artillery battery on the hill, and we won't have a reroll for our land there. Okay, we'll roll those activations. So for artillery assault in the center with a reroll, we go active. For the brigade with the battery on the hill, it is also active. And then for the land where these don't have a reroll, they're active as well. All right, so both sides are fully active. No one has a hesitant brigade. So it'll be a straight roll off at plus two for the French which is a special scenario rule. So the French get a three, which goes up to a five. The Prussians get a five. The Prussians um, actually had initiative last turn, so the Prussians retain initiative in turn two. OK, so as the stun starts to rise, uh, we can see the uh, French attack starting to move forward. So on this flight, flight, right flank, uh, we're approaching the Prussian forces scream, scream, screening the left-hand flank of their village. Uh, and the skirmishers are still engaging. In the centre, the French artillery has just deployed uh, to do uh, some counter-battery fire, potentially, against the Prussians on the hill. The French regulars have advanced up to the hedge line, and there's an outflanking move, potentially, by the uh, French left-hand uh, division as it's looking to outflank the uh, open part of the Prussian position. The Prussians, uh, seeing that they had a weakness on this flank, and they did actually move first this turn, have redeployed to an extent. So uh, their land, their cavalry down here has moved into column. It's in line back there. Uh, probably should have been in line when it deployed for the battle uh, and is looking to potentially fill this gap on the right flank. All right, uh, Prussians have initiative, so the Prussians will open fire first. We'll move on with the firing phase in turn two. OK, so opening fire with artillery assault with the Prussian battery in the village. Um, I think it might, uh, I think it will have a go still at the closing infantry. They are a greater threat at this stage to the battery's position than those uh, French guns, which are still unlimbering this turn. So again, firing with artillery assault. Wow, that's pretty good. That's an 11 plus a bonus casualty. So at effective range, that'll be three, four casualties and a discipline test on that French battalion. This will be a discipline test at minus one because they will have taken more than four casualties. They're all a four, that goes down to a three. That battalion recoils at taking those casualties and has to retreat. OK, so for those of you not familiar with General d'Armée rules, uh, the infantry battalion that was here has to retreat. So they have to pull back um, 21 inches, which would have taken them off the table. And I, uh, I rule that uh, uh, dispersed units that retreat off table uh, can't, can't come back, uh, but retreating units can. But actually, in any event, uh, for this brigade, uh, this shows the benefits of supports. So you take an initial move uh, six inches backwards, which would have just taken them just beyond where those sappers are uh, sitting on the table there. And then you fall back diagonally. And if you fall back behind a supporting unit, you can stop your retreat there. So um, I've put them slightly to one side because uh, I have my figures here for Napoleon. Let's have a quick look. Uh, we can't really see because of the sun. There we go. 
There's my uh, Napoleon command group surveying the development of the battle. So I pushed them off to the side a little bit, but uh, that retreating unit has not had to go back 21 inches uh, and potentially go off table. It's uh, fallen back uh, and because it had supports, uh, it's fallen back and stopped its retreat uh, in the uh, lee of that protection afforded by that supporting battalion. So a good result for the Prussians from their first artillery shot. We'll now fire the second battery. This one is at long range and it will go at one of those flanking infantry battalions, the leading one of those two. Again, another great result. I'll just check, but I think that scythe wielding wraith is indeed a six. So that's an 11. At long range is two casualties in a discipline test. So this is two discipline tests on the French this turn. These are on the conscripts, but they are in column. So I think they get a benefit in column and count as recruits. I will just check that. But they rolled a 10 anyway, so they are fine. So I'll put those casualties uh, on that French column. Otherwise, Prussian skirmish fire didn't do very much. We caused a couple of casualties against one of the skirmish screens on the far side of the table. OK, time for the French to react. OK, so a good turn for ADCs as we started turn three. Um, the um, Prussians uh, went for artillery assault on both batteries and a redeploy order for their cavalry to allow it to take a different position on the battlefield. The redeploy order went active. Artillery assault again is in place on this battery on the hill. Unfortunately, we didn't have a re-roll for our artillery assault on the other hill, so that battery is hesitant can, and, as a result, cannot fire at long range. So um, possibly would have been better just going for a re-roll on the activation of that brigade, but uh, it's always do, easy to do that uh, after you've seen your dice rolls. For the French, again, plenty of ADCs this turn, and uh, all French brigades have now got infantry assault. So uh, they're now fully equipped to start driving this assault home. OK, for initiative, the Prussians won the roll-off, so the Prussians get to move first. OK, so quite a lot of uh, movement here in this turn, so turn three. So the Prussians remain static on this flank. They probably should have deployed into line, but uh, neglected to do that. Over here, the French brigade of conscripts uh, has all moved forward in column. They've pushed through their own skirmisher screen and are um, in assault range. Uh, of the Prussians next turn and potentially assault range of the village. In the centre, slightly more disjointed formation here for the regulars. That battalion that was in the rear has reformed. Um, but as a result of that, uh, this battalion here has not advanced very far. It moved up to the hedge line to stay in cover and it's attached sappers to it. So these are the divisional sappers and I give them, uh, I just love having the sapper figures on the table and uh, for each um, division that I, I normally fight 10 to 12 brigades and they had a company of sappers attached um, so they're my sapper unit probably seen them before in other games let's have a look they've got a few uh, uh, axes and staff and spades uh, that they're carrying there you go there's the guy with the spade and the axes we attach them to the infantry battalion uh, to give them an extra benefit when assaulting buildings uh, and as I say, I give them a plus one. It's not in the rules, it's a house rule, but I think it's a nice bit of flavour and it doesn't uh, tilt the game too much. And you can only, I play it, that you can only attach your sappers once in a game to one battalion. Um, so as long as that battalion's still intact, the sapper benefit applies, but you can't jump them from unit to unit. All right, uh, there we go. So, uh, and on the far left, the French flanking manoeuvre continues to unfold, but now threatened by the uh, land fair lancers. You, Potentially can just see uh, there in the distance moving around that village in the rear of the Prussian position. All right, we'll now do shooting in turn three. Prussians open fire first. OK, so the Prussian guns are going to open up third a turn of artillery assault and they're going against this battalion behind the hedge line. Let's see how they do. Another not bad roll, an eight and uh, a five on one of the... No, so yes, an eight and a six from the casualty dice. So the six gives this an extra casualty. They're at effective range. So an eight is two casualties. So that's three casualties against the battalion uh, with the sappers, but no discipline test this turn. And then we're going to fire the Prussian guns on the hill. They have got a target in effective range. They can fire at the skirmisher screen. They can only fire straight ahead, but one of those skirmisher screens, fortunately, is just straight ahead in the arc. So this will be at minus two against the skirmishers. So unlikely to do very much. But we roll a 10, so that's an 8. Um, at effective range is two casualties on the skirmisher screen. All right, we'll just mark those. 
Okay, so turn four uh, is a critical turn here. So for the Prussians, unfortunately, they have lost initiative this turn, and two of their brigades have gone hesitant. The Lambert Brigade and the brigade holding the village are both hesitant. Kleist uh, is now coming onto the table with Blücher uh, and another brigade um, uh, for a so divisional size formation for the Prussians. But a Prussian brigade is going to come on table from Kleist's core here. So uh, uh, we'll see how that plays through. For the French, they've managed to activate their young guard and Grouchy's cavalry reserve as reinforcements. And all their brigades, apart from the uh, regulars in the centre, are active. So let's start with movement. Sorry about the sun interfering on the shots. Hopefully uh, I'll, I'll keep trying to get the uh, exposure right, but occasionally go through a sunbeam. Uh, it'll be gone uh, shortly, so I um, hope that's not proving too much of an interference in your viewing. All right, so the turn four, the French move first, and their reserves start coming on table. Okay, so turn four has been a pretty active turn, so a lot of developments uh, on the French left flank. So um, Grouchy's heavy cavalry has started to arrive. We have two regiments of cuirassiers who've arrived on the left flank. And then on the other side of the woods, we have another two small regiments of Grouchy's cuirassiers have arrived on this flank. So they're both deployed onto table this turn in response. Their land, their cavalry unit that was deployed here has reformed as best it can. Um, the French had initiative, so they appeared um, before the Prussians and after the churns, uh, charge sequence. So there was no opportunity for charges for these lancers. So one uh, element of that large lancer regiment has swung to face uh, the cuirassiers that appeared uh, here. And the other element has kept its facing um, the other two squadrons, and they're uh, at least got the ability to protect their flank uh, from a potential charge from the cuirassiers. The French conscript brigade has continued its advance up from that table edge and is now starting to get into the flanking of the Prussian position that was formed up on this hedge line and up to the village here. So as a precautionary measure, this Prussian uh, right flank battalion as part of this brigade has formed square because uh, it's being threatened by the cuirassiers who are probably in charge range next turn. And this second battalion has swung to its flank. Uh, it's still in column, giving it a bit more flexibility, but uh, uh, it's swung to its flank to uh, also be better prepared to take a charge. The Prussian artillery remains unmoved on the hill. So we move across into the center. The Prussian landwehr have also oriented to the right somewhat to potentially provide some support against this attack from the um, cuirassiers. The Prussian reserves uh, first battalion does need to come on, so I'll deploy it on the, uh, by the farm building here, uh, but uh, they've only got space to put on one of their reinforcing battalions this turn. Then as we uh, move across to this flank, this is the right flank of the French attack, we can see this brigade of conscripts has moved in and is now charging the Prussian forces supporting the village in the centre. Uh, the Prussian regular brigade is still in a bit of a mess. It went hesitant this turn, so it's been unable to move, but it has been reinforced. We've got a brigade of young guard now uh, on its flank, and a second brigade of young guard has deployed on the table edge down here. So we now have two brigades of young guard, two brigades of conscripts, and one brigade of regulars going up against an equivalent of three brigade-sized formations of Prussians. So they're outnumbered nearly two to one. In addition, on the flank uh, over there, you can see the French heavy cavalry arriving. From the end of turn four, Blücher's uh, orders are to protect his army, try and hold this position, and then keep his escape route uh, alive so he can move back away from the advancing forces of Napoleon. With the young guard appearing on the table, Blücher has clocked that he's fallen into a trap and Napoleon may well be on the field. All right, I'll put that final Prussian unit on coming as reinforcements and uh, then we'll move on with uh, charges uh, starting down here. Again, one of the disadvantages of playing solo, um, as the observance of you may notice, I should have done all the charge results completions before I did the rest of the movement, but I did just crack on with the rest of the movement as I got carried away with the excitement of all the reserves coming on the table. So anyway, so just uh, so you know, the first 
uh, regiment, uh, or a small yeah, regiment of Prussians, this is the 6th Infantry Regiment actually, uh, have just come on the table as part of the rest of Seaton's corps, uh, providing the first reinforcements for the Prussians' position here. And uh, we'll now move on and we will indeed do the charge results. So we've got a couple of defensive volleys to do, so we will start with this charge in the center. The Prussians here do have an advantage, they are in line and the French have taken five casualties. The French have thrown their colonel in. I think the Prussians will do the same, though, as it looks like. They've got the best opportunities of throwing the French back here. So first thing we'll do is a regular volley, uh, as the uh, Prussians' um, uh, line infantry units here uh, do a volley against the incoming French. We roll an eight. Right, I'll just check the status of the recruit troops, make sure they are line uh, and not conscripts and uh, then we'll check the result. Yep, the Prussian forces are in quite good health in this battle, so only actual land their units will be of land their status and all reservists will count as line troops. So this battalion uh, here, um, which are Lasso's troops, uh, for the observant of you, that's why they're uh, uniformed in uh, black with a red trim or red facings, they have a status of line in this battle. So a roll of eight for a standard volley is three casualties on attacking French battalion. So this will have quite a result on that charge. That takes them up to eight. So we'll now move on to the charge results for this combat. Oops, no, I didn't do that quite right. We have this infantry battalion tucked away inside these buildings. They also can do, I believe, supporting fire. So they've done supporting fire. They caused an extra casualty. So that takes it up to four casualties, but I do need to distribute those four casualties between the attacking battalion and its supports. So two will go on the attacking battalion and two go on the supports. You always um, spread the casualties evening, evenly with any odd figures going on the main attacking battalion. Still, uh, a pretty effective volley against the attacking battalion. Let's see how the charge results play through. Okay, so with the casualties playing through, uh, that means actually the attacking battalion is only on seven. So it's on minus one for the level of casualties, minus one for taking two casualties, but it has got its general attack, that takes it to uh, rather than uh, minus two, down to minus one. And the Prussians also get one for having their general attached. So let's do the charge results. There'll be a net plus two swing to the Prussians on this uh, dice roll. So the Prussians get an eight, the French get a seven. The Prussians go up, uh, well, Prussians get a plus two modifier. They do have the option of a support from the building. I will just let me just check, just make sure that buildings can offer support. Okay, so we've got clarity, clarity on that. I think we can provide defensive supporting fire so that shots from the garrison as the battalions charged in against the Lutzel are permissible, uh, but they cannot actually offer support. So we don't get a re-roll for the Prussians in the village. So the Prussians don't get an opportunity of re-rolling that too. And their other supporting unit, this one here, is also engaged in combat, so it cannot offer a support. So the Prussians will stay on eight plus two is 10. The French will re-roll their two, but they still get a two. So that is a 10 against a seven. So that's a victory at plus three for the Prussians. Okay, so uh, a defensive result of winning by three is a minus three on the attack result for the charges, uh, and they retire and take an extra casualty. So this battalion here has taken heavy casualties and that's now on eight. All right, now let's do the defensive volleys down here. The Prussians open fire. This will be a standard volley bat at half effect as the Prussians are in column. We roll a nine. Again, not a bad defensive fire result. And a nine for a standard volley is one casualty, but it will be a discipline test on the French. Let's take that discipline test. No modifiers. A five, so they go unformed again. That will not help in the charge result. Okay, so the only modifiers on this one will be a straight plus two to the Prussians, simply because the French are unformed. Uh, French will get a re-roll, Prussians won't. Prussians roll a six. Oh, three was from the previous dice roll. So Prussians roll a six with no re-roll. French roll a three, but they will re-roll that one for their supporting battalion. They get a six. So that's an eight. So that's a straight draw. So I think the French will form up short and do a ragged volley. Uh, let's just check. Yeah, indeed, the Prussian the Prussian defensive fire forced the French column to stumble to a halt, uh, and they did a return fire in their own right, uh, and they have caused one casualties one casualty on the Prussians. So on this right flank, 
the Prussian line holds in turn four. All right, that's it for charges. We'll now do firing. Uh, it is French initiative, so the French artillery gets to fire first. Let's have a think. See where we'll fire artillery against these Prussian positions. Okay, so the French artillery down here is opening fire, and it's going to be firing against the Lutzer battalion. I think that's fine. The line of fire is now free as the French have retired. So um, I don't see there's any reason why I can't fire at them as the game is played in sequence. So uh, let's open fire. This is at effective range for the French artillery. Pretty good dice roll. They roll a 10. At effective range will be uh, three casualties and a discipline test on the Lutzel. Lutzel have no casualties yet, so this will be a straightforward discipline test. They roll a 9. They're fine, but they have taken casualties. Okay, I never film, <laughs> film the skirmish of fire because it's never really, uh, it doesn't really hugely swing the game normally, but it's uh, been pretty effective this turn. So this uh, Prussian skirmish of screen you've just seen here uh, fired two of its bases at one of the French screens that was facing it and two at the other. They both rolled a six, so they both caused a casualty and that caused the French skirmish of screen on the right to break. Uh, and indeed that will now impose a falter test on this French brigade down here. Um, as a wiped out screen um, triggers a falter test. Uh, the other screen has lost a base. All right, uh, we will do that falter test at the beginning of the next turn. Final bit of French firing will be the French, uh, sorry, Prussian firing will be their artillery. We will fire these guns on the hill down against this battalion down here. Again, it'll be at effective range. Sorry about the sun. It'll be at effective range, so let's see what we do. It's uh, artillery assault as well, so we roll the extra dice. No casualties for that, and a six. So that won't be particularly effective, might be just one casualty. It is one casualty on the French from the guns on the hill. And then the guns on the second hill will open fire against the closest of the French columns there again. I think that'll be effective range. I will just check it when I roll, uh, when I put the casualties on, if there are any. That is a nine. At effective range will be two casualties and a discipline test on that battalion. Battalion's taken, no casualties. And rolls an eight, so it's fine. So that's one casualty uh, on the battalion close to me and two casualties on that battalion on the far left of the French infantry assault. We'll put those on. So uh, the end of turn four, so at uh, midday in the game time, the Prussian position, well, we've had a good turn that the Prussians on the left flank here threw back the attacking French columns. We've caused a, a falter test on the central brigade uh, and we've uh, also caused some casualties on the far left brigade. But we do now realise we have a massive threat to our flank. So the Prussians will have to do some big redeployments as we move into turn five. Let's roll our ADCs and see what the French will suffer from their falter. Okay, so a pretty good turn. Uh, all Prussian units are active. All the French units are active. Uh, all the French on guard have got infantry assault off. The Prussians also again got artillery assault off on their central battery. Um, unfortunately, because we put so many um, uh, dice on to... Um, uh, I was going to say, onto infantry assault, we didn't have um, uh, any spare dice, which was foolish to allocate to this brigade. So another mistake by me. Um, apologies to all those French supporters out there. So we're down to this straight roll of the dice. What happens to that French brigade that's hesitant in the centre? Well, luckily for me and for all those French supporters out there, we have rolled a five, which is, uh, which is a good result. So on a line unit, they obey orders this turn. All right, so they are not even hesitant. All right, so all brigades on both sides are active. Let's see how we do for initiative as we move into turn five. Okay, the French get a six. The Prussians get a six. The French had initiative last turn. The French keep initiative in turn five. Expect for some charges to come rolling in. All right, so uh, beginning of turn five, no charges by the Prussians, but again, the French have continued their assault and the pressure they're applying to this Prussian uh, uh, left flank. So more French infantry battalions from this conscript brigade are going again against the Lutzo to pin these troops in place. As we move across, we can see that the French flanking force has taken the opportunity to charge in. Uh, it's got to go through uh, some cover, so that might not help but it's going in against that 
Prussian square that was forced by the moving on the table of the cuirassiers. The cuirassiers uh, also decided to charge. They decided not to charge the square. They'd leave that to their infantry colleagues, having done their job by pinning it. And their first battalion, sorry, first regiment has hit uh, some lancers, the, uh, the uh, landfair lancers, just behind the village, uh, with the second regiment in support. And as we move across, we can see, just seeing it a bit closer here, the other two regiments of cuirassiers have charged in against this regiment of all hands. I'm afraid um, this always was going to be a tough gig for the Prussians to uh, win this game, or at least survive this game. And it looks like uh, we have new unit syndromes. Sacrificed bravely to hold off the French attack by one turn on this Frank. I don't fancy uh, those Landwehr Lancers will last against those uh, cuirassiers very long. All right, so some charge results to do. Let's see how the combat plays out. We'll start on the Prussian left flank with the conscripts charging in against the flank of this village. So again, first we do a standard defensive volley. Ah, that's a bit better for the French this time. The Prussians only rose, roll a four, which would be a loss of fire discipline. So uh, no benefit from the defensive volley. All right, let's go on to the charge results for the Prussians and the French. So Prussians have got three casualties taken from the artillery fire last turn. That won't impact them. The French will throw their commander in. I think the Prussians will also throw their commander in. So those two benefits uh, knock one another out. So this will be a straight roll off. Both sides have a support. Uh, the French have two, but one of those will be at minus one because they're unformed. Uh, so let's see how this plays through. Quality of troops, just checking that. The conscripts are one morale grade lower, but they are in column. Let's just check, make sure that doesn't uh, have an effect. Indeed it does. The conscripts, uh, as I think I mentioned earlier, if they're in column, don't suffer that uh, morale grade drop. So, uh, yeah, this will be a straight roll-off with some re-rolls. See how the French do. French do better this time. They roll a nine. The Prussians roll an eight. The Prussians will take their re-roll. Better, the Prussians also get a nine. So this is a tough, tough ask for the French. They want to win this one. So do we try re-rolling the four? We will try re-rolling the four. We'll do the first one at minus one. It does nothing. And the second one, six. It's worked. It's paid off. So that's an 11 against a nine. So the French win by two. So on an infantry versus infantry combat, we will get melee and hand-to-hand. -hand. The French will have Elan and the Prussians will be unformed. First success for the French charges. Okay, so moving on to the second infantry charge of the turn. Uh, the square fired. Uh, they had to be halved because it's a, a, squ a square firing. Uh, and we only rolled a five, so that caused no casualties. So the charge goes in without any casualties. There are no other body fires both sides deploy their general into the combat. So again, this will be a straight roll off. Prussians will have one support and the French also one. So let's see how we've done. The Prussians have rolled pretty well. So that's a 10 for the Prussians. The French will re-roll their one. They get an, a seven. So the French lose by three on a straight roll off. Or unless there's an uh, infantry in column uh, penalty. Doo, doo, doo. Can't see that there. Is, oh, square versus infantry is minus two, so I missed that. So the uh, the French go up to a nine versus a ten. Um, so they lost by one. So again, they will stop and they will do a volley against the Prussians. They only get one dice because they're in column. We've rolled a five. So that's one casualty to the Prussian square. Okay, so perhaps this uh, won't be as one-sided as I thought. So I'm uh, in the scenario rules I'm playing. It doesn't determine the quality of French cavalry, but I think uh, certainly my understanding is the quality of French cavalry in 1814 was pretty terrible. The mounts were in a, a dire state as the uh, massive losses the French had suffered uh, in the campaign in Russia. So I'm going to deem that my cuirassiers are only mounted on uh, poor quality mounts, so not battle cavalry. The cuirassiers will only count as campaign cavalry. That might not be quite right, but uh, anyway, I'm going to do that. The Landwehr certainly are campaign cavalry as well. So the French simply get a plus one bonus for being heavy cavalry, 
um, and the um, uh, bonus for being of higher morale grade is uh, negated because the land fair are in column and I haven't seen anything that says that doesn't apply a benefit for cavalry. Um, again, I will check that in the detailed rules in the summary. It doesn't say anything. So it looks like this is just a straight plus one, both sides throwing their generals in for the French. French get a re-roll, which might help them because they rolled a double one. Uh, roll that one again. They roll a four. The French, both sides, roll a four. So that's a plus one to the French. So we simply go into melee. So we'll see how that plays through when we do that later in the turn. Now let's do the other charge result. Again, the French have supports. They are heavy cavalry and they have a general to play into this one this time and the Prussians don't because they use the, their general uh, or their brigadier on the first combat against the Curaçaos, whereas the Curaçaos have two commanders. Okay, so the French will go for the reroll. They are on plus two on this one. Nine, 10, 11, play seven. They win by four. So they will melee with a LAN and the Lancers on the left flank will be unformed. Okay, so we've got some interesting melees to play through. I'll now do the rest of the normal movement and be back with firing. Okay, we're done firing, and again, the battery on the hill has been really effective here. Uh, it caused six casualties on this uh, French infantry battalion that's uh, hiding behind the hedge line that uh, was the support battalion, uh, but now is the front one after the second battalion back there had retired. So it's now taken seven casualties. Uh, and this brigade in the centre pretty much has been stymied by the uh, Prussian artillery, so great firing from them. Not so good from the other battery on the hill there, it had a shot at the young guard, didn't do anything, and the French artillery did some counter-battery fire, but again, it did nothing there. One or two skirmisher casualties, the fr uh, Prussian skirmisher screen in front of its brigade in the centre has lost a base, uh, and it's starting to look a bit fragile now, um, but uh, otherwise not much going on in skirmisher land. All right, now let's crack on with some of the melees. Let's start down here. So firstly, French go in here. The French simply get uh, an extra dice for being uh, or having a land from the charge result, and the Prussians lose a dice for being unformed. So the French get effectively an extra plus two. Let's pick up all these dice and see what they roll. Okay, so initially that looks quite good for the French. So that's two casualties for the Prussians. Oh. No, not so good. And only two for the French. Too many threes confusing me. So that's a draw uh, in the first round of melee. Infantry versus infantry, a draw. We stop and have a firefight. So on a firefight, the attacker retires three inches. All units are now unformed. So again, they effectively don't charge home. Okay, so we'll start with this cavalry combat on the right and then we'll move to the one on the left. On the right, uh, the French have the disadvantage of being a small unit, uh, whereas the um, Prussians actually are a regular size unit, being of five bases there, uh, and it's a straight combat, so there was no Alain or uh, Unformed. For the other one, the, uh, the units are both of regular size, so the Prussians will lose that benefit, and they are also Unformed, and the French have Alain, so that'll be a much tougher proposition. Okay, let's do the rolls for this first one, the closer, and see how we do. Okay, so the Prussians get five dice, and the French get seven. The French get a bonus for being heavy cavalry, and they do get a bonus for being a better morale grade, because the column uh, indicator only applies when you're charging. Right, let's see what we got here out of this morass of dice. So the Prussians, again, seem to have done quite well. The Prussians have caused three casualties, and... They have won. The French Curaçaos only caused two casualties. They couldn't get the pass those points of the lances. So they take the ground unformed and the Curaçaos retreat off table. My gosh, I didn't expect that. Right, let's do the second cavalry combat. Can the Prussians be lucky again? Okay, so this looks a much closer one. I may have underdone the French on the last one. They may have got plus two dice. Can't recall how many I gave them for being heavy cavalry. I think I might have only given them plus one. But anyway, we'll let that result stand. This one, again, a lot more dice for the French. They are heavy, they're a better morale grade, and the bonus for lances, and I didn't I did also got this one right in the other one. Bonuses for lances do not apply against Curaçaos. 
Okay, so again, not great roll for the French, quite a few misses there, but they have caused five casualties, and the Prussians have only caused one this time. So they are going to rout, and the Curaçaos take the ground in that combat. Okay, so here we are at the end of turn five, and the French Curaçaos have cleared most of the Prussian uh, cavalry from this flank, and they again still continue to pressure the uh, Prussian brigade uh, that's uh, supporting the artillery in this village. Down here we still have one unit of Olhans, but they will take a fault test as one of their units was wiped out or routed uh, effectively off the table. Um, and uh, the French supports have fallen back as their colleagues were forced to retreat, uh, but they uh, are still available. Right, that's where we are, but the Prussians still holding well in the centre. Um, let's start. Uh, well, let's move on to turn six. Okay, turn six. The French have uh, all their brigades active. The Prussians have all of their brigades active apart from their reserve landwehr brigade, which is uh, hesitant at the village uh, where it's coming on. And that does block further reinforcements coming down the road. So uh, the Prussians were testing at minus one and they have lost the initiative. So the French keep it as we start turn six and we move into... French charges. I'm sure that cavalry and possibly the pressure against this flank will continue. Okay, not realised by the Prussians. Uh, the French support moves last term give them uh, just the range for this Curaçao regiment to charge that artillery battery in the flank. I think that's uh, pretty much curtains for them. Um, otherwise, down here, the French infantry have again charged the Prussian square. Down here, the Prussian lancers are in trouble. They've been charged in the front and the rear by the uh, other Curaçao regiments uh, as they attempt to clear this flank. And then as we move across the table, the French have again charged in, keeping the pressure up on this right flank uh, and ignoring the village in the center at this stage. All right, we'll need to do some charge reactions and then we'll get on with the rest of the movement once that's done. But first, some defensive firing down here for the Prussians. Okay, doing the charge on the left first, this is Plus two for the French, for the Prussians being unformed. Plus two to the Prussians, because of the casualties they've caused on the French. The Prussians have committed their brigadier. So net result of this will be a plus one modifier to the Prussians. But the French do get a reroll. Which looks like they need. What have the Prussians got? The Prussians have got a four. The French have got a three. Two terrible dice rolls. Let's do the French reroll. They roll an eight against a four. That's uh, a, a win by four. That gets reduced to a win by three. So the attacker takes the ground and the defender retreats with 1d3 casualties. So the Prussians fall back and take two casualties. Okay, and this one will be a straight plus one to the French as they've committed their brigadier and the Prussians haven't. The French get a reroll, but this reroll will be at minus one because it's an unformed unit that's providing the support. They've rolled a five, we will roll a one. That goes to a seven, you lose one. That goes to a six against a six. That's a straight draw, plus one to the French, because they've got the Brigadier attached. So they will melee with a land, and the Lutzow Battalion here will melee unformed. Okay, so we'll now roll for the artillery battery. This is a straight plus four modifier for the French for charging the artillery in the flank. Well, I've rolled far too many dice for the Prussians, and the French have got a double six. So this will be a destiny test. Ah, and it always seems to happen, doesn't it? The Prussians have also done well. Uh, but the French have won by five. Cavalry uh, will melee with Alain. And the artillery will melee unformed. So the cavalry don't quite break through. They needed one more. Okay, we'll now do the French infantry assaults against the square. Both sides have uh, a reroll. The French are at plus two because they're assaulting a square. Let's see how the French do. The French will take their reroll. That's made it worse. They're on a seven against a seven. The Prussians will stick. They will not take the reroll. The French stop and halt and let off a volley, which causes one casualty against the Prussian square.
All right, tough call for the Prussians here, so it's at least plus six to the French. The French don't get a reroll, uh, and the Prussians have rolled a nine against the six, so they only win by three. Cavalry versus cavalry, so the French will melee with the land, and the Lancers melee unformed. I don't think that combat will last too long. Oh, so okay, so completing movement, some of the landfair have deployed into line to uh, get ready to take up defensive positions to try and shore up the village. We've got the combats due to go on here and the young guard moving up. And now on the table we have four battalions of old guard, which the French have deployed on the right to try and execute a pincer, crushing the Prussians between the old guard swinging in on the right and their heavy cavalry swinging in on the left. Meanwhile, the young guard uh, continue to move forward to add support to try and attack the hinge of the Prussian position. All right, let's do our firing in turn six. Right, not much firing in turn six. The Prussian artillery again opened fire and done another three casualties against that French battalion. So this French brigade in the center is about to break um, if the French don't do some redeployment soon. So we'll see what they do in response to that. Otherwise, uh, some skirmishers uh, exchange firing, but the screens are all intact, and most of the other shooting was masked by the charges. All right, let's start with the melee in turn six, and we'll start with the French down here. They have the initiative, um, and they will be using six dice, um, although they are one morale grade below the Prussians. So the Prussians would start with five, and they lose one for being unformed, but they gain one for being one morale grade higher than the French. So this will be a fairly close combat. Let's see how both sides do. Well, that looks terrible for the Prussians. Not a single casualty caused, and the French cause three. They will cause uh, that Prussian battalion, I believe, to rout. It's not good for the artillery battery in the center. I don't I think I've ever seen this before. They simply get one dice for uh, suffering from being unformed and attacked in the flank. And the Curiosiders get a bunch of bonuses for being heavy cavalry and having a plan. Let's see what they do. Yep, they do one, two, three, four, five casualties to one. So there is a casualty on the Curiosiders, but the artillery will be wiped out um, as it's unable to rout away from cavalry. All right, just working out the combat for the Lancers. Uh, and I've just been looking at the melee modifiers and actually the Curiosiders attacking the artillery didn't even take the one casualty because artillery just automatically disperses if it's hit in the flank or rear. So let's see what the Lancers do uh, against the Curiosers. They cause one casualty, and the Curiosers uh, don't do brilliantly, but they do cause four casualties. Um, so they win by three. So the Lancers will rout and rout off the table, and that'll be the end of that small brigade, and the Curiosers can take the ground. All right, we're going to move the Lancers and the Curiosers. Okay, so we're going to have a critical command phase for the Prussians this turn. Their garrison holding the village in the centre, which really is the key to their position, has to take a fall to test because the two Lutzer battalions have been put to rout and retreat. And uh, the French have destroyed the cavalry battery that was supporting the second uh, regiment of Prussians that was holding the right-hand side of this position in the centre. Um, and they are uh, now going to be pinned as those curiosers continue to push up and pressurise the Prussians into a square and going, uh, forcing their reserves to become immobile. So critical turn for the Prussians. How are they going to do with these falter tests? We'll roll ADCs and I'll be back with the falter tests in a second. OK, so we've done activation for the French. We put a lot of rerolls on because we wanted to retain the initiative and all our attacking brigades are in, good, uh, in a good position. They're all activated and they're all on infantry assault orders. The Young Guard, which also has infantry assault, however, unfortunately went hesitant as there were no ADCs uh, to allocate to either of their two brigades. So that's this brigade here and the other brigade over there. And the Old Guard is active, but it doesn't have any redeploy orders. So it can really only move up to fill this gap in the center uh, as its original deployment orders were to do that. All right, for the Prussians, uh, the Landwehr brigade that was blocking the entrance has gone active, as has his, his colleagues in the reinforcements, uh, but the uh, Landwehr in the centre are hesitant. OK, so we've now got two rolls for faltering brigades. Both have re-roll dice. So let's start with the Lutzel battalion, see how they do. They roll a three which for a line brigade is a retire result. 
That will keep them hesitant and move them close to the table edge. So we'll try again. We get a one. Savoir keeper. Uh, not good. We've lost that brigade. Uh, we'll see what a Savoir keeper does for a garrisoning battalion. It may be able to stay in place. But these other two are definitely gone. All right, now let's test for the brigade that is holding the rest of the central position that lost its artillery battery. It's also on a retire result. God, I don't want to lose both this turn. This is a tough one. Do we retire? I think we're going to get squeezed out of the position. We're going to have to re-roll. We get a two. That is also a retire. So not great for the results for the Prussians on their falter test. The French are gaining their position. Not so nearly so many charges this turn as the French are really penning the Prussians into the corner of the battlefield. The French are trying to keep up the momentum, although this brigade is weak. It is uh, it wants to keep the pressure up on the Prussians, so we have charged the Landwehr battalion that's formed to its front. Um, this will be a tough one for the French to pull off, but uh, keeping the pressure up. Over in the centre, the French heavy cavalry are uh, crashing into the retiring brigade that's fallen back from that position in the centre. They are unformed, so that might be difficult. And over here, we have the opportunity uh, to charge into these two Prussian columns. The Prussians do have the opportunity to try and form square, so they will. So we'll start with the green flagged unit. They fail, unfortunately, so they go unformed. And then the second unit... Mm. Um, I'll need to check their morale status, but I think they have also gone unformed. That's a bit of a tragedy. None of them have formed their squares, uh, and that means they are more at risk, perhaps should have stayed in column. But anyway, uh, the cavalry were far enough away to make the test, so it does seem the right thing to try and do. Uh, unfortunately, neither of those battalions are veterans, so they don't get a bonus. So both of them are now unformed. So first firing by the Prussians uh, will be a defensive volley. This will be an inferior volley uh, um, from the Landwehr, but not bad. A nine for an inferior volley is two casualties on the French. That takes them up to seven. And it will be a discipline test at minus one, which they fail. So they go unformed. They will probably stop this charge. All right, let's now move on to the charge results here. Right, well, we said it before, should be okay for the Prussians here. They're testing at plus four. The French get a reroll. The French uh, have the advantage of that supporting battalion. The Prussians, their supporting battalion, unfortunately, is just marginally out of support range as they hadn't completed their redeployment over here. So let's see how we do. Ah, that's good. The French get an 11. They'll probably keep that. But at minus four, that takes them to s oh, seven. Uh, and the Prussians are also on seven. So I think that causes the French to stop and they will just simply do a volley against the Prussians and they do cause one casualties on the land there, but they at least hold the French off for this turn. Yeah, I don't know if anyone knows the answer to this. So um, the cavalry have charged this, uh, these Prussians uh, in this little copse down here. The French definitely get plus one for being heavy cavalry and the uh, Prussians suffer minus two for being unformed. I'm not sure whether the Prussians get plus two for being in column. Now, the usual units were all in a mixture of square and column, uh, and when they retire, they go into what the rules describe as column of mob. Now, I my inclination is that will not give them a column protective bonus uh, against a cavalry charge. So I'm going to go and play it that way, because mob sounds like fleeing mass rather than a proper formation. So this will be a test at plus three to the French. The Prussians do get a reroll, but their supporting unit Mm, is also retiring, so I'm not sure whether they'll even get a reroll. Um, let's see what that was. Yep, okay, so Prussians do quite well actually, or the French do terribly, depending on how you want to see it. French only roll a four, a plus three that takes them up to a seven, and the uh, Prussians are on a six. So the French cavalry win by one, so they will melee. So we go into a melee there next turn. All right. Now let's do the uh, two other columns. They again will fire defensive volleys against the attacking cuirassiers, but these will be unformed volleys and uh, they will be inferior volleys because they were trying to change formation, I assume. So the first volley is a five, that'll be nothing. And then the right hand one gets a six, that will also be nothing. So no effect from the defensive volleys. And again, for these attacks, the French will uh, get plus one for being heavy cavalry. The, but the 
Prussians uh, will get their plus two for being on col in column, even though it's an unformed column, but they suffer the minus two for being unformed. So it's simply plus one for the French on both of these. We'll do the right hand roll first. French roll a double one, they get no supports, so they will bounce off, uh, having lost that by three, uh, by two rather. Um, cavalry versus infantry, they will with char with one casualty. And then on the second one, so this is the left hand attack, French do much better, they win by more than six. Um, uh, the cavalry declare a victory, they take one casualty and they de ride the defenders down and they get to charge on and they can charge on. Cavalry uh, is 3d6, 5d6 rather, 5d6 for the French. Okay, so they get a charge on distance of 10, 16 inches. All right. We'll put those casualties on and do those movements of the French cuirassiers. Okay, tough for the Prussians. The charge on has taken the uh, French cavalry into this unit of uh, Prussian infantry down here. And um, that looks like that will, uh, again, be a really difficult charge result for them to succeed in. Let's do the test. Okay, so let's roll for this combat. This will be plus three for the French because they're going into the flank of that uh, Prussian column. See how we do. Prussians roll a six, and the French roll a seven, eight, nine, ten. So they win by four on a charge result. So they will melee with a LAN, and the Prussians will melee unformed. Okay, let's start with the hand to hand combat. Down here, we've got the French cuirassiers going again against this retiring battalion. Uh, should be. Uh, should be substantially stacked in the French's favour. Uh, the Prussians cause one casualty. The French actually only cause two casualties, so the French cavalry does win by one. Cavalry versus infantry. The infantry retreat and the cavalry take the ground. All right, not uh, quite as devastating as it could have been there. Prussians did all right, but they've got another retreat result. All right, and then moving on to our charge on result down here. French cuirassiers going in again. Should have the advantage, but we'll see how well they roll in this combat again. One casualty caused by the Prussians, but one, two, three, four, five, five casualties caused by the French this time. So they've won by four. They will wipe out that infantry unit. Uh, they disperse and the French again take the ground and the heavy cavalry continues to charge into the midst of this Prussian formation. Okay, so we've got some tough rolls for the Prussians here. They've lost one brigade because it's Savoir qui peur there, so therefore they lose one ADC permanently. They only have four ADCs they've been able to activate for this turn. They've had to allocate all of those four ADCs, or sort of chosen to activate uh, the fourth of those four ADCs to a re-roll, and the other three are all needed for initial rolls on the falter tests. So three of the four Prussian brigades, five Prussian brigades on the table, are faltering this turn. I think we'll do that first, because that will give us a clue as to where the game's going. All right, we'll start with the two weak ones we haven't allocated ADCs to. So the first one is this Savoir qui peur in brigade that uh, previously was the Lutzo Italians. They're all a three. They retire off table and are gone. Second one is for this brigade down here that was charged by the French cuirassiers. They've lost two battalions, so they are again a broken brigade. Um, so let's see how they do. They roll a four, um, which is a rally. Retreating units, but routed units disperse. So they can rally, but they are a broken brigade. And then finally, we've got a test against this brigade here in the centre, which is continuing to falter after last turn. Roll a two, they will use their reroll, they will a three. So that is a retire. That brigade will now disappear off table. Prussians are in a desperate state. Okay, I'm going to call the game there as a convincing victory for the French. Um, the Prussians didn't do too bad in this last turn. The landwehr um, down here uh, and the infantry battalions here. 
managed to resist the charges by the French heavy cavalry, but they are still pretty much at full strength uh, and able to continue pinning the uh, Prussian troops uh, in square. Uh, meanwhile, this village here has now been captured by the French. I haven't actually moved uh, that regiment all forward, uh, but the, the front two guys are the bases that uh, now occupy that village. Uh, the village in the centre is now occupied by the French with the old guard, uh, having executed a forwards order, now piling up through the main road through the centre of the village, uh, and they will crash into this Lambert brigade, which although it survived by another set of assaults by these French battalions, they're still in not too bad shape, uh, and with the guard on one flank and these battalions on this flank with nothing to protect them and still no space to deploy more troops on because the road is blocked uh, because the heavy cavalry have pinned the reinforcement route uh, for the Prussians. There's no option here but for the remaining Prussian troops to retire off the table. Pretty much all they've got left is their two Landwehr brigades, uh, having lost three other regular battalions. This always was a tough uh, one for the Prussians to do better than Blücher. They needed to hang on uh, onto the table uh, with few casualties for 15 turns. The French have actually convincingly uh, won the game in uh, eight turns. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this game. It was quite fun to play something uh, a little bit different. It was a very one-sided scenario. I don't mind those, actually. Uh, it's interesting. You don't always have to have balanced forces. So it was interesting to see how these played. As always, uh, the young guard uh, and indeed the old guard didn't really get into action. But the devastating uh, uh, element in the battle was the flank, flank attack by Grouchy's heavy cavalry. I never actually brought Grouchy's light cavalry on as well, which uh, could have also uh, been flung into action. But there wasn't really space to deploy them. Uh, and the heavy cavalry had more than enough punch to carry through the game. So anyway, another one to uh, add to the library. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, uh, please remember to subscribe. Uh, let us know any comments. I uh, hope the sound is uh, okay. I'll just put another new set of microphones uh, and headphones on uh, for recording this video. So uh, hopefully they've worked well. And I uh, look forward to seeing you all again next time. Cheers, everyone.